Walking this corner when seeing someone fucking this girl. Yeah. Fuck all that spinning block. That's a little boy. Should we catch him? We rocking this world. <laughs> I let everybody have their fun with me. Never had a woman say she done with me. I was working out on the company. I keep money coming in constantly. My little brother done be having runs for cheap. Trying to get it. I've been on the run for weeks. I think none of you niggas could come for me. Both of my kids got it on. See, I'm the real deal. All the way on half step. Gotta do better than last year. That's my motto. Put a switch on the big for the auto. Put them things on the plane like I'm Rollo. Proud to say that I finally changed up. Why the fuck they keep bragging my name up? Cause I'm popping. I can never go back to the old days. No way. Back to walking to work on a cold day. Back to thinking my ex was my soulmate. Back to telling myself it'll be okay. We'll be okay. We'll survive and I'm roaming in OJ. I was paying the bills I had no say. I can never go back to the bottom. To the bottom, selling drugs, never know when the cops come. Niggas jealous, they wanted to rob us. I was just trying to give me some dollars. Couple of dollars, turn my penis from hundred to commas. I'm so happy them days are fine. Welcome to another episode of the SD for L show. I'm Justin Thin. I'm here with my co-host Brian Massam. Brian, how you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm good. My Eagles are one and zero. Mm -hmm. At the expense of a lot of the local demographic watching, but what can you do? My so, Spartans are two and zero, though. Mm, My Spartans are two right. and zero, and so right. we got two very special guests yeah. tonight. Spartan dogs of the week. There they are, the Killer Bees. The Killer Bees, Jalen Berger, Jared Broussard. How are my fellow dogs doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So appreciate that. appreciate you guys joining us. So. I guess, first of all, we got to ask, just to get out of the way, you guys are both transfers. You came in this offseason. So I guess uh, for both of you, first for Jarek, how much did your previous experience with Mel Tucker at Colorado and Jay Johnson weigh in in your decision in coming? And then, uh, Jalen, how did your comfort level with Saeed Khalif, Jensen Gebhardt, those former Wisconsin guys, play a role in your decision? It's me first? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, for me, uh, so – Coach Tuck came to see you for like one year and I kind of like like got a feel for his way of doing things and like I, like everybody wanted him to stay but he ended up leaving so like later on down the line when I ended up with the portal like like I kind of already had a feel for their like their way of doing things uh, like the way he want to build his culture so that kind of weighed in on it okay Joe uh, can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, it was um, I know when when you hit the portal and you came over here, um, Saeed Khalif, who was at Wisconsin, who was the recruiting director there back then uh, when you were a recruit, uh, Jensen Gebhardt as well. <coughs> did did those guys have any sort of bearing on making MSU appealing to you at all, or no? Uh, yeah, when I first got here, there was uh, two familiar faces here on the staff, and those are the two that recruited me at Wisconsin. And Saeed is a guy that's from my hometown, so. I'll say, yeah, they played a big role in me coming here. Okay. So for both of you, how much of a role did Kenneth Walker's success play? Because he was a transfer that came to Michigan State, went to the NFL as a second-round pick. That must have weighed um, a little bit in your decisions, right? Yeah, I mean, for a guy to just come in and put up crazy numbers, it's pretty like, ooh, I want to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all do, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just the way they utilize him as a running back, you know, catching the ball out the backfield, use him in the wildcat. That played a big role in it, for sure. Yeah. So, so just asking you guys, when you, um, what was a notable difference each of you felt uh, when you got to MSU versus Wisconsin, Colorado? Uh, what was the difference that you felt when you got here? Shit, I mean, the difference I felt, first difference I felt, I gained, like, 15 pounds. Why? I mean, I was I was little body, you know, big body. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 nah, all jokes aside, just, like, you know, like, like, all the people that's on the team and, like, you know, like, the relationships that I've built this far is, like, it's crazy. Like, like, I feel like I'm in real good hands with, like, the coaching staff and stuff. 
and and then like and like the people we around every day just compliments everything. Jaylen. Yeah, same thing he said. Um, just the relationships that I built here and the way the practice ran is definitely more fast paced than what it was in, in Wisconsin. And for sure, when I first got here, I'm out of breath every play. <laughs> we didn't like the signals for sure. Like I had to learn the signals because it was constant. We didn't do signals, so just learning that was a uh, good experience too. It's funny you talk about the pace because when I watch Wisconsin, to me their football team looks like their basketball team. They're all big, <laughs> fast, a big, slow, methodical. And like maybe because yeah. you had the Wisconsin uniform on, you just look a lot faster <laughs> in, in the green and white, you know. But uh, yeah. get, if each of you can just kind of tell me your your first impression when you met Mel Tucker, what did you guys think? Uh, 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 Jarek, you first. Uh, so I guess when I could say when 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 Tuck first walked in our meeting room when he like arrived arrived in Colorado. Everybody was like, I mean, he was a black head coach, you know. I'm, I'm yeah. a black player, so, so you know that kind of hits. It's a little different. So I mean, just, just you know, like like having that African American figure walk in there and like, I don't know, he got us all fired up so fast. Like we just met him, and people already was willing to run through a wall for him. It was it was crazy. Like, wow, Jalen. Uh, when I first met him, you could just tell like he's he's like a laid back type of guy, you know, just chilling. But you know, when you really listen to him, you know he he knows what it takes to win for sure. Yeah, Jerk. When when you were in the portal, I know um, I kind of covered your recruitment a little bit. Um, I know you we took an official visit to Oregon, and some people in the industry were, were crystal ball predicting you to go to Oregon. And you and I exchanged DMs. You're like, nah, don't don't believe the hype just yet. <laughs> and um, so, what what can you take us behind the scenes of just your recruitment in the portal? I guess how long until you had a decision? Just what was that time like for you um, once you entered the portal until you got to East Lansing? So I actually hit the portal, and then that dead period was coming up. So uh, I, I kind of just put, like, two schools down to visit as quick as I can. Well, three schools down to visit as quick as I can. And it was TCU, you know, that's back at the crib. Yep. And then it was Oregon. You know, Oregon, that's like a childhood dream. So when they hit me, I obviously wanted to go there. And and then, you know, the chance to just reunite with Coach Tuck and, like, see their way of doing things over here. It was cool, so I went on all three visits, and then I just came out here and like, I don't know, it was just like the vision. Then like, like, like being out here on my recruiting trip, like, like I felt comfortable, you know, bomb comfortable. It's like, like everything just kind of felt right. Okay. And it's like on a larger scale too, you know, playing in a big. 10 rather than the back 12 so that kind of way then for sure for sure and then Jalen yeah kind of similar question for you what was your I guess decision timeline like back when uh, you entered the portal how long after you entered did you know Michigan State was home I know you took a visit here and um, just yeah talk us through your days in the portal uh, my season was cut short my second year because of a little situation over there I was dismissed from the program at Wisconsin but like as soon as I entered my name in the portal Saeed had hit me up immediately so I took my visit over there and, uh, you know, when I first got there, you know, it's familiar faces, Jensen right there, Saeed right there, and just throughout the whole visit, it, like everything just made sense for me to just come here. So I didn't even take another visit. I just committed mm. right there on the spot. Okay. Mm. So you guys have, you know, I back in my day, I'm looking at thunder and lightning mm. at the Giants. Mm -hmm. uh, was at the... Uh, as a Wisconsin running back, who was Thunder and Lightning with the Giants? Do you remember? I don't know, Brian. I'm 23 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one, the Rod Dane and uh, uh, Barber, Tiki Barber. Mm. That's what I was thinking of. But I like the Killer Bees, though. I like that. I like <laughs> yeah. that. It's because we, you know, it's in this NIL era, this marketing era. I like the Killer Bees nickname, and you guys, you guys have done a hell of a job. But as you guys have seen these days, uh, a lot of running backs in the NFL are um, getting drafted and they're sharing snaps in college and there's been kind of a you know uh, a, a devalue devaluing the first round draft pick of a running back as we saw with Kenneth Walker um, and you're obviously fresher right now sharing the snaps uh, do you guys think about that or is, it, is that 
just when you look at the NFL, is it too far away to think about uh, of sharing snaps and understanding, you know, um, the the just kind of what what an, a running back means these days now in the NFL. Just getting to stay fresher. Yeah, staying to stay fresher. Do you guys do you guys appreciate that now? Uh, I, I mean, yeah. Um, I feel like with uh, Jay Johnson, we we run a pro style offense, so what we run is pretty much what it's gonna be like when you do make it to the league. So. So I feel like just having the abilities to like, you know, share and stay fresh, you know, staying fresh is one of the biggest things to keep the run game going at. And I feel like our, our team has been benefiting from it a lot. Yeah, Joe? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's a good idea because like, I mean, getting 30, 30 carries a game really mm -hmm. doing you well. And in the NFL, you see teams using two, three backs in the, the game. So I think it's a good situation for us. Yeah, for sure. And, and you guys look fresh every time you get the ball. There's no late game fatigue. And I think it's great for both of you, your long term NFL careers and even just your short term productivity. But just the, the two games you guys have played at Spartan Stadium. What is your, um, I guess, your takeaways uh, from just playing at Spartan Stadium, the home fans um, and just the start to your seasons as a whole? The atmosphere go crazy. That's the crazy. Uh, I've never <laughs> been in that like that before. The deep water, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> deep, so. You know, uh, but yeah, the, the atmosphere for sure, mm. and uh, the lights start flickering beginning of the fourth quarter. That Mama mm. Obama uh, song, that song is crazy for sure. But just hearing the crowd roar when you when you break a run and stuff like that, that's the stuff that I miss. So, but Jalen, you're used to that, you know, end of the third quarter, jump around. I mean, Wisconsin, around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Wisconsin's got a pretty this good. This is cooler. This yeah, is this is cooler. Yeah, the, you know. I think I think the Mobamba thing cooler, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, you got the woodshed, <laughs> you got the deep end, and you got the way the program has really been revitalized. And, you know, we're excited to have you two gentlemen. Are you guys, when you look at Washington on tape and you look at your offensive line and, the, and you look at the way Coach Johnson has set you guys up uh, scheming-wise, uh, what, what, um, what do you think is going to take this week different? What's it going to take uh, uh, to win this game differently than the past two games? Uh, when you had, uh, you know, you're, you know, the time zone, three time zone changes. Um, obviously, it's been, it's been very well documented that you know Big Ten teams have a have a rough time traveling to the West Coast. What have you guys done differently this week to prepare you for the for the time zone time zone changes in Washington? Uh, I mean, just like everybody else been talking about um, the the concept of uh, what is it? It's Sleep, sleep banking. banking, I think. Yeah, yeah so you <laughs> so, know, it's, it's getting in the bed, you know, a few hours earlier. Not a few hours earlier, but like an hour earlier. And so, and, and you know, just just, just doing the unrequired, you know, watching that extra tape when you're not at the facility, when you at the crib on your own. So, you know, just little stuff like that to just, like, stay prepared and know what the opponent is going to do. Yeah, what he said, just uh, basically just having discipline, to be honest. Uh, going to sleep earlier, hydrate and all that, doing the own fire, like he said, watching that, that extra film. Yeah, it's a tough ask right now. NBA 2K just came out like a week ago, so <laughs> yeah. shout out to you guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm done loaded up right now. <laughs> <laughs> After you watch that tape, though. Um, so so what, what, are, what are you guys listening to before the game to get hype? What, what's your top five? What, top five favorite rappers? Ooh. Top five, no order. Yeah, no order. No order. We got a little baby. Mm. Mm. Oh, you're Uzi. a little baby. What's up? Yeah, yeah. you the goat. You too. Yeah. Little dirt. And probably a little bit of Detroit rap. I like that. Oh, okay. Well, what 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 Detroit rappers? <laughs> uh, you know, what baby trying. Babyface Ray, you know. Okay, okay, okay. You got you got to start listening to that Dame Dot. Dame Dot's the most underrated in Detroit. Yeah, I'm gonna tap in. But Jalen, <laughs> what about you? I wouldn't even say I have a top five. Like I listen to everybody, to be honest. But I listen to, like Lil Baby, Gunna, all that Lil Dirt. 
uh, future for real. Mm. But when I got up here, everybody was bumping the Detroit music, so yeah, yeah, I had to tap in with the Detroit music for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's um, that's that's all I heard in East Lansing my first year or two there. So it's uh, it's just the way it's just the way it is. It's um, yeah. mu that music is different. I know the West Coast and uh, some down south have tried to copy it, but Detroit sounds nothing like it. Well, speaking of that, have you guys been down to Detroit? Been to the city? No, nah, I haven't got there yet. Uh, I haven't been out there yet. We gotta get you down here, man. It's a whole other world in East Lansing. We gotta get you sure. down here. So yeah. you guys gotta come East down. It's already a whole other world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually there in Boulder in '08 when uh, Obama received the uh, the nomination to be president. How old are you guys? You guys, man, you guys are. Were you guys born yet? <laughs> uh, but I've got, Boulder's gorgeous. Uh, Boulder's gorgeous. But we got to get you down to Detroit to come visit the city. But uh, we wish both you guys the best of luck Saturday. We know we have a, a tough task heading out west. We have no doubt that the killer bees, <laughs> the killer bees, the dogs, are going to show up, carry the rock, and represent. And uh sure. We appreciate you guys joining us, and we appreciate you guys representing the program. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to watching you Saturday and the rest of the year. And stay healthy, and God bless. Go green. And I want you guys bring that W home and once a, once a week. We just got to go 1-0. That's it. Thanks for sure. your time, guys. Appreciate you. Once a, once appreciate a week. It, so yeah. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what a wonderful young man. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Derek. I'm, I'm, I got that thunder and lightning in my head for some reason. Yeah. I'm thinking of Rod Dane and uh, 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 Tiki Barber. And this, way past your time. I know Tiki Barber. My Eagles way used to wrap them up time. behind the line of scrimmage. But th those two young men, you know, they're, they're a very, they complement each other very well. Yeah, they do. And they're a, they're a tough one-two punch. Yeah. And, and they both got some thunder to them. And they both got some lightning to them. Because you see Jarek, the, the one that's supposed to be all speed, all finesse, he runs through those arm tackles. And uh, Jalen, like you were saying, he does look quicker than he was at Wisconsin. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Is it me or? Uh, no, he definitely looks quicker, right? Or just Wisconsin make everybody look slow. Yeah, it's, it's um, somebody on YouTube had like a five minute video of every single snap Jalen has ever had. It was quick, easy to watch. I don't think I saw him make as many second level defenders miss in all of his snaps at Wisconsin than I did in the first game at Michigan State. And that's, I don't think that's a hyperbole. At Wisconsin, what you saw at Jalen was whatever hole the offensive line created, he would maximize that and he would get every yard possible that was blocked for. Now he's getting not only the yards that are blocked for, but he's creating yards on his own after that. He wasn't doing that at Wisconsin. And so we, we asked him before the show, like, has he actually lost weight? He said no, that he's actually gained weight. But I would say it's probably cleaner weight. It's probably more muscle. I bet the body fat percentage is probably down. And he's um, he's just got that lightning to him in addition to the thunder. I, so I totally agree with you. Yeah. When I watched the Wisconsin tape and I watched him run here, he looks quicker. Yep. He looks uh, more elusive at the second level. Mm -hmm. And I, I, to me, he looks lighter. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, and it's, you're, like you said, clean weight. So yeah. uh, it'll be fun to watch in the first test of the year. But let's move on. Yeah. I think um, talking about Akron, I think, Owen, do we have a video? Yeah. You want to play it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. This week, Mel Tucker challenged his team. And their goal is championships. Play fakes to Wiley, throws over the middle. He's got his tight end ball open out. at the 20, hit, and the ball is fumbled. Cal Halliday picks it up, heads for the far right sideline. On his feet, out near midfield. Reed and Coleman to the right. Broussard off right guard, into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. It's right side throw, fingertip catch made. By shot, oh, the ball, ball's Lewis, out, ball's out. and he's trying to make more yardage, and the ball is batted away. Fumbles it out to the 45-yard line, and the Spartans have recovered. Hand off the burger, off right guard into the end zone, standing up. Snap back to undercoupler. Toss sweep to the oh, right. Bumble. It's bobbled. It's down, and the Spartans swarm it, and they have the football. 
Hand off to Berger again, gets to the goal line, reaches across with a football. Yes, touchdown, MSU. Undercover. Whoa, Look man. Way, one way, a rusher came from the other side, blind side hit. Stops, fires, end zone, is. caught. Touchdown, Trey Mosley. Hands off to Jarek Broussard, running to his right, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Hand off to Berger, running off right guard, into the end zone. In the shotgun, under Cuffler, under siege, and he will be sacked. Hit down by a big Derek Harmon. Hand off to Collins. Elijah Collins into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. It does not matter who we play, okay? It's all about how we show up, okay, and how we work and how we stack relentlessly. So, we, you know, we, we won the game 52-0. Yep. Um, happy, largest win since 1957. Justin, what were the key takeaways from the game? Yeah, it's, it's um, a game that had a, a lot of observations that stem from it. I think um, in terms of just what check boxes you wanted to see them hit, you wanted to see them come in, run the ball when they wanted to, and uh, they did that. They were successful in doing so. Um, second straight game that they were able to do that. Um, offensive line, I would say, looked better than they did in week one. Obviously, part of that is because Akron is a lesser opponent than Western Michigan was, but I'm sure part of that was also them just improving in their own regard. So that's what you wanted to see. And um, Jacoby Winman speaks for itself. Uh, his performance speaks for itself. Three forced fumbles. We'll talk more about him later. Just a continuation of Kendall Brooks fitting in nicely in his um, efforts to replace a, the injured Xavier Henderson. And then Peyton Thorne um, didn't exactly uh, take a step forward from the Western Michigan game, but um, I kind of dove into his performance and just to start to the season in my article for The Athletic recently, there I kind of dove into, is it time to hit the panic button? What kind of might have forecasted this start? So. We don't need to go too much there into him. I know you've pointed out you've seen him throw from the back foot a lot, not stepping into the throw. So we'll see after this week uh, what practice, what they get corrected, how that goes. But still still just wait and see mode there. Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, Peyton had a – I think he's pressing mm -hmm. a, a couple of games. And, you know, when you um, – there's a lot more on his shoulders right now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he's got he's, – he's obviously the son of, of a coach. And so I think uh, this is a good test for him to kind of regroup. And mm -hmm. I'm very confident that he's going to come out Saturday and be a difference maker because we're going to get to the point where we're going to need him to win a game, right. win a game or two, because if we want to compete for championships, the quarterback has to win a game or two. And I'm very confident. You know, and you could tell by the way he talks and the way he observes the way he played. Mm -hmm. You can tell that he's very conscious of that. Yeah. And so I, I fully expect him to come out Saturday and to uh, and to kind of improve on what he's done the first few games. Yeah. And so I'm 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 I, I'm 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 bullish on where he's going. Yeah, I think uh, part of the reason that that we can be optimistic is you know he doesn't have complacency. Complacency is not an issue with him. It's just um, I can't remember which quarterback it was. I think maybe it was Carson Wentz um, talking about after a great season Sh taking a step back. Shocker, Eagles. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, it was uh, sometimes when a quarterback has a great season, they rely on more on their arm talent as opposed to fundamentals. So when they see a throw is there for the taking, they throw with their arm. They don't step into it as much. So maybe what we're seeing is he has a lot of confidence in his arm, maybe rushing the release. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes throughout the season. But just a mental note that some quarterbacks have I, made in the past. You know, I also think he, being the son of a coach, um, growing up, right, eat, breathing, and sleeping football, you know, there's good and bad to that. You, you know what you did wrong, but sometimes you can overthink things too, right, yeah. because you're just so analytical about everything. Mm -hmm. And so I think, uh, I think that the pedigree, the way he's taught, the way he's coached, Jay Johnson – you know, is one of the best coaches in America. I think we're going to be just fine with 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 the uh, QB one. So, I'm 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 excited to see him bounce back. But uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the impact players of the game. Uh, yeah, uh, of the Akron game. Go yeah, ahead. we'll start with um with the the guys that were here just on the show. 
Uh, Joe and Berger, uh, once again, great, great performance on the ground. Ran for 107 yards, 17 carries, three touchdowns this time around. Um, continuing from what he did um, against Western Michigan, he showed great bursts at the line of scrimmage. He showed um, an ability to make linebackers miss, had a nice jump cut or two, really accelerated after the cut. So great stuff from him so far. And then um, Jarek Broussard, he was the guy that you can see uh, continues to run through arm tackles. And someone of his stature, I think like 5'9", um, under 210, I believe, or somewhere around there. That's, that's a guy that you wouldn't expect to, to be breaking that many tackles, and yet he is. So great performance from both of those guys. Broussard had uh, 15 carries, 107 yards, uh, two touchdowns. So two guys there that, that I expect Michigan State to rely on heavily in this Washington game. Two guys that um, probably have been the most consistent performers for Michigan State's offense so far this year. So that'll, that'll be interesting to see if they can keep it going this upcoming week. But also, in terms of the key players, we can't go much further without talking about Jacoby Windman. He's just... Um, Two-time uh, defensive player of the... Yeah, first time in program history that yep. a Michigan State player has won Big Ten Depoy, uh, or uh, Defensive Player of the Week. And um, he's only played two weeks, so it's pretty good success rate so far. <laughs> a great start to his uh, Spartan career. Uh, he had five total tackles, one and a half sacks, two and a half tackles for loss, three forced fumbles, one PBU. He's currently second in the nation in total sacks, first in forced fumbles, and um, just a great start. He's going to have to be key this upcoming week. We'll talk more about that when we talk about Washington. But um, And then Kendall Brooks. So Kendall's a guy who um, I also wrote about him in the Stock Up, Stock Down article for The Athletic that – he probably has been the biggest stock up player of this um, season in terms of where the expectations were for him before the season started to how he has looked two games later. Ben Vincent were also in that conversation. But Kendall Brooks played at Division II North Greenville University mm. just two years ago. Musa Muhammad, um, I don't know all the details there, but, but Mel has credited... My former teammate. Yeah, Mel has credited uh, Musa Muhammad as uh, being the reason that they found out about Kendall Brooks. And he comes in here from Division Two, a Division II uh, career where he wasn't even all-conference, uh, was third in his team in tackles, comes to Michigan State, and a year and a half later, he looks like he belongs on the field for a Power 5 program. I think he has uh, outlasted expectations in such a quick time, uh, more than any, anybody was expecting. And uh, just, just a great story there. Uh, I think it highlights Michigan State's ability to, to develop talent in the defensive backfield. Obviously, develop talent with the Portal guys, as we know. But just a, another game of him being a key player. He's now forced to fumble in both of the games he's played for Michigan State this year. He's done a great job. So now, the ultimate test. Three time zones, 2-0 MSU, ranked ninth in the coaches poll, invades. Washington, Husky Stadium out there, the Pacific Northwest, which is a very difficult stadium to play in, mm -hmm. 7.30 p.m., ABC, national television, and uh, talk a little bit about Washington and what you're saying. Yeah, Washington, new coach, Kalen DeBoer. He was uh, Mike Penix's offensive coordinator at Indiana a few years ago. And yeah, Mike Penix is now at Washington, if you're not aware. They um, are 2-0 this year, wins against Portland State and Kent State. And um, Penix, Michigan State fans have known him. He has had, uh, I believe, two successful games against uh, MSU in his career oh, so far. Gave uh, us a hard time. Yeah. And um, I was watching their game against Kent State. Haven't done a full rewatch of the Portland State game yet, but I'll be doing that here shortly. He's uh, looking much healthier than he did uh, the last year he played. He was darting around the pocket. He wasn't exactly scrambling throughout the game. He only had four carries for 27 yards, but they came in clutch, crucial spots. Uh, one of them was on a third and long that ended up setting up a touchdown drive. So he's a guy that you have to watch out for in terms of his mobility, but not consistently scheme for it on every play. Um, but yeah, he's a... Uh, this is, it's going to be a good test for Michigan State. A great early season success on both sides of the ball. So you had to, last year, you had to Miami, who's got a big name, 
but you know probably a top 35 program mm -hmm. very similar to washington yeah you're heading out west three time zones and, and a, a pretty a tough place to play probably a, a tougher place to play than in in miami mm -hmm. how important is it to get this win to set up to set us up for a big 10 run i think it's very important because washington is a team that you can beat if you're michigan state um, they have a secondary that can be attacked if Peyton Thorne is looking like his old self. They're a team they should be able to run against. And also, when you're recruiting the Pacific Northwest, the Caleb Presleys of the world and Jaden Waynes of the world, you would like to be able to go out there and beat their team and kind of have, be able to point to that when you're looking at the um, recruiting um, kind of targets in the future years. So it, it'd be nice for them to win um, and also prove to themselves that when they play some of these Big Ten teams, when they play the Minnesotas of the world the following week or the Wisconsins of the world, that you have beaten teams that are about in that same tier so you can go ahead and continue that rolling in the, in the future weeks. So when you watch, you and I watch the tape, and we talked about uh, the keys to the game versus Washington. Can you expand on that, please? Yeah, so... Mike Penix, um, what he did when he played against Michigan State the past couple of times, he if you were get, if you were to give him time, he will sit there and just pick you apart. Those eight yard hitch routes, those like slants, the posts in the middle, um, they kind of have um, a system that Kalen DeBoer ran over there where it's just you take what's in front of you, you march down the field, you hope to limit you hope to limit any sort of mistakes. And you just keep taking what's there, keep taking what's there. In order for Michigan State to have success in this game, they're going to have to speed up Penix's internal clock. That's where Jacoby Windman is going to be a big asset. Aaron Boulay, other pass rushes as well, Jeff Petrowski. But they're going to have to get him to throw the ball quicker than he's ready to throw it because he is the quintessential quarterback that if you give him time, He's just going to pick you apart all day, all day. He doesn't have elite arm talent where he's going to throw 40-yard, 50-yard bombs on you. He'll just take what's there and move you down the field methodically. They've got to speed up his internal clock. Um, at the end uh, of the day, you have to establish the run, just like you do in every game, but especially this game. In a day where Thorn, um, you're not sure what you're going to get out of him going into the game, you need to immediately come out with your run game, setting the table uh, from the first drive. The second drive, you need to be able to move the ball down the field, um, sustain some time of possession, make sure you give Peyton Thorn time to settle in. So. It Establishing the run will bring the safeties right, down. Right. What does sure. that do? Well, that's where you saw last year what Kenneth Walker is able to do for Peyton was give him a lot of one on one matchups on the edges. So if you can get Peyton Thorne, one of the safeties down, you get Jaden Reed going up against the other safety on the other side. And because of the run game, uh, kind of preoccupy him a bit as well, you're going to see the other side of the field, Keon Coleman, uh, Trey Mosley. Um, either a running back in a flat or a tight end, be covered one-on-one. -on -one. So that's going to be three DBs covering three guys on Michigan State that are going to be threats to be pass catchers. I think that's what Michigan State has to get into. And then when they do get with Washington in that predicament, Peyton has to hit his throws. So when we, when we go back to the defense, we've been a little vanilla over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously, and offensively as well, right? Mm -hmm. We're not really showing everything that we have to. Right. Do you expect more exotic blitzes this this week on defense? Yeah. Or are we going to, you know, look at eight and nine yard hitch routes the whole game? What do you anticipate on defense this week? I think what you'll see is the first time uh, that Scotty Hazleton gets to use some versatility with all the options he has all mm. over the field. He is going to be able to turn to Aaron Brule, uh, Jacoby Winman, Ben Van Sumeren, Brandon Wright situationally on third down. Um, even Cal Halliday show, showed to be a good blitzer. So in those edge rusher category slash linebacker types that can all drop back or rush the passer, he should be able to have some great looks of simulated pressure. He should be able to bring some blitzes that not a lot of schools can do because you don't have the positional versatility of guys that can drop back or run. So they should be able to change the picture on Penix a lot with how they're blitzing. So yeah, I do expect them to, to take advantage of that for the first time. 
Um, I think you saw in the very, very first defensive stand of the very first game where they took off most of the defensive line, put Brulé and Winman in the stand-up configuration, put Ben Vinsterman in the blitz. That was the first time you saw Michigan State has dudes to have blitzes like that. And then they didn't really need to turn to that the next two games for the most part. But that's what I expect to see. Goons. Mm. Goons. Mm. We'll get our goons. We'll be just fine. Yeah. Does Thorne have to pl- outplay Penix to win? No. I think Peyton Thorne is going to have to simply not make mistakes that set the team back. And he has to hit the throws that are open. Because when you look at Mike Penix, with his legs, with his arm, and with a defense that's not necessarily stout, he's going to have to be their best playmaker all game long. He's going to be the um, producer of most of their uh, offensive yards. And Peyton Thorne, he has Jalen Berger to rely on. He has uh, Jarek Broussard. He has uh, receivers that are going to make plays for him and bail him out at times. He has a defense that should be able to hold up much better than they have in years past. So as a result, he just needs to not be, um, I guess, a red flag in this game, and the team should be fine. But Penix, Washington will only go as far as he will take them. So no, Thorne doesn't have to play head-to-head better than Penix in order for Michigan State to win this game. I think Thorne is going to outplay Penix. Mm. I believe he is a difference maker, and it will show this week. Um, Speaking of Mel Tucker... And the culture and psych- psychology of the program. Heading to Miami, heading to Washington, heading to uh, South Africa. Neutral thinking, aggregation of marginal, mar- marginal gains. What has Mel instilled in this team m- mentally, the mentality of this team that differs from the past? Yeah, I think when you see a program start like 2-0 and like that and go ahead and play their first real test of the game, you see some schools uh, around the country, they get complacent after the 2-0 start, and they don't exactly execute uh, very smoothly when it comes time to, to actually measure up to a real test. And I think with Michigan State, the, you're, the fans are not going to have to worry about that. They're going to come in playing as if they're 0-2 and fighting for um, any, any and every win they can scrape together. That's the, that's the way that the team is going to play in every situation. Will that always lead to, to a win? No. Um, that's why the game is, is played on the field. But mm-hmm. you know they're going to come in with the right mentality. And you also know they're not going to be phased if, if they come in, Washington goes, scores on them in the first drive, punches in the mouth. For some teams, that might be game over after the first drive. But with Michigan State, you know they can, they can throw some counter punches mm-hmm. and, and take that. They don't flinch, mm-hmm. right? The program, they do not flinch. That's the culture that he's building over there. One last thing about, um, you know, Penix scrambling on third down. How important, that's it, when we watch the tape on him, this is where he kills teams, third and six, third and seven. You know, he doesn't run much, but he scrambles and gets that first down and breaks breaks their back. Yeah. Um, how are we going to contain him on defense on those plays? I think um, one thing that you will probably see going into the game is they won't have a dedicated spy man set on him from the onset. He doesn't run often enough to justify that sort of attention. But what I what I would hope is on third down, someone like Ben Van Sumeren would be used as a spy. Um, or maybe they would just play a lot of zone throughout the game, so, so people always have their heads turned, always able to tackle him. But um, y- if, if you have Ben Van Sumeren out there on third down, it'll be an opportunity for Michigan State to have an athletic, rangy sideline to sideline linebacker that's fast and able to keep up with containing a quarterback that Michigan State hasn't had in, in a while. So that's, that's a new twist, a new um, window for Michigan State to defend athletic quarterbacks they didn't have in the past. And look for them to turn to that, um, maybe not immediately, but the first time that he has a back-breaking sort of scramble, um, I expect that to be implemented on third downs. So we're expecting a big bounce back game from uh, QB1. Uh, uh, Daniel Barker, mm-hmm. right? What, what are we expecting this week that we believe Jay Johnson has kept in, in, the, in the shelf? Yeah. And what is he going to bring out in utilizing uh, uh, Daniel Barker? Yeah, I think um, 
may, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that Daniel Barker is going to go ahead and have at least five targets, if not more. Uh, this is going to be Jay's uh, first season with a reliable heavy usage tight end at his disposal. Mm. Obviously, he did not want to advertise to the world that that made a big uh, difference to his offense uh, through the first two games. So it makes sense why he didn't get a, a ton of usage. Um, but even then, you saw in the first game, he gave Barker two handoffs. He wanted to see how the offense would execute those. He wanted to see what they would need to clean up. And then after that, he tucked that away. You didn't see any heavy usage out of Barker after that. Just wanted to experiment with that a little bit. And I think you come out and you see um, a reminder that, okay, this is what using a tight end on a consistent basis looks like. So that, that not being the case yet is what has me so convinced that they've been really, really vanilla. Um, and I think Barker being used heavily more in this game, more in the Minnesota game after, that will be the sign of what Jay has always wanted to do at tight ends. Now, keep in mind, at Colorado, the tight ends were not putting up monster numbers. But what they were is in the red zone and on third down, they were the key safety valve, and they got a lot of targets in those situations. Jacoby Winman. Mm -hmm. Players to watch. Yep. It's gonna, the key. Yep. The, the, the element, man. Yeah. The element of, of containing um, or the, of, uh, of speeding up Penix's internal clock falls uh, squarely on, on Jacoby Winman. He's Michigan State's best pass rusher, best pass rusher in a while, actually. And um, if he's able to get there a couple of times early on, I would not be surprised if, if Penix's ability to sit, read, go through progressions and throw is altered for the, for the rest of the duration of the game. And he'll just be getting the ball out quicker than he wants to. And uh, I guess we'll see what effect that has if he can get there early a few times. He's got a great start. Great start, great young man. And I'm going to tell you, you know, you, you, you put pressure on the quarterback, you get home, that changes the whole complexion of the game. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's something that we're going to watch, and uh, we're excited to see. Just so some of the stats, some of the stat leaders of uh, heading into this game. I don't know if you have that right there. You see some stats there. You look at uh, the, the, the top passing, you know, Penix's numbers. You look at the rushing yards. You look at the receiving yards. Jay McMillan's going to be tough to cover. Um, these are some of the, the top stat leaders. Uh, do we have uh, uh, Stephen? Yeah, Stephen. Uh, St there's uh, Stephen Brooks's tweet right there. Uh, my colleague at 24-7 Sports, definitely a certified ball knower. He's um, done some research on Washington earlier this week. I uh, said Mike Penix has not been sacked once this year. Touches on the fact that he's a great improviser. He's mobile while despite not being a, a scrambler per se, extends the plays. Uh, last year, Washington was ranked number one nationally in pass defense, but lost two NFL defensive backs um, in the top two rounds. So that's a big drop off in talent. And uh, this year, they're allowing 11.6 yards per completion, so not great. Thorne has an opportunity to, to really uh, make a difference here. And also, they're ranked, uh, they were ranked 108th in run defense in 2021. Not a great sample size to see if they're better or worse this year because of the competition. But like I said, they're going to have to come in and establish the run right away to give Thorne time to settle into this game, settle into the crowd, and I think they have the opportunity to do that. Amir Speed. Talk a little bit about Amir Speed. And oh, what yeah. He needs to this game. Another, another player, uh, another key player. If, if Michigan State is worried about Penix's mobility and they send extra, extra rushers to speed up the clock or they put a BVS and a spy on him, you're going to see more man than Michigan State has used so far this year. And um, Amir Speed, um, I think probably will be going up against Jalen McMillan. Um, or, or um, even uh, their other receiver on the other Giles side. Giles Jackson. Uh, there's also Giles Jackson. Mm -hmm. I think he might be in the slot, Ch Chester Kimbrough. Um, Charles Former Brantley. Michigan Wolverine, he Giles is. Jackson. Yep. yep, transferred over there. He wanted mm -hmm. to um, see what speed and space was actually like. Um, but Jimmy Lake couldn't provide that. But anyway, <laughs> um, they, they, have, um, they, have some, they have some solid receivers, three solid receivers. Um, and uh, yeah, Amir Speed, if he's going to be playing in man coverage this year, he's going he's gonna to have to prove this game, that 6-3 frame, the good speed. This is where he gets an opportunity to show that in one-on-one -on -one coverage. So when you watch tape on, on Washington, you and I, we've uh, watched, really, Penix jumps out, uh, McMillan jumps out, Jackson jumps out, even left, left tackle Jackson Kirkland jumps out. 
Uh, their defensive end, I think, is going to be very difficult to contain. Uh, Zion, Tapula, Fatua. And then really sa uh, safety, Alex Cook, when we looked at, at some of the tape, had played well those first two games. And it should be very interesting. It's a tough road test. I think it's really exciting. Um, it's a good marker, right? Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good marker. It's a good uh, a non-conference marker heading into the game. And so should be fun. 7.30, ABC. And uh, that's a tough place to play. So it should be a good test heading into that game. Yeah. On to the next. Draymond Green. Yeah. Inducted. Tell yeah. us. I think, uh, oh, and do we have a video there of Draymond talking? Yep. Coach is, through all the meetings, film sessions, practices, games, yelling, one thing that was a constant was the love you showed and how much you cared. You were and are the true definition of wanting more success for someone than they even want for themselves. You would say, I'm living my dream. I want to see you live yours. I appreciate that. Kid from Saginaw. I never even knew it was possible to really dream. When you see these things you want, it's just like, man, I'm going to do that. But nobody ever taught me that that was a dream and that it was possible to actually do. You showed me that. I appreciate you. I will always, and I mean always, I will ride for you, my man. Mm. Y'all remember it takes a bit. My God. How do you not want to play for that guy? That's, that's actually, you know, playing there, it's emotional. I mean, it's special. It's, they come back, they want to play for coach. They want to come back, grind week. You know, how, when you're, if you're a recruit, how is that not special to you? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely, I'm telling you, it just, it's, Tom Izzo embodies Michigan State University and loves the place so much, was born and raised there. And that right there is just indicative of, of what he's meant to the university, what he's meant to former players. And it's super, super special. I believe we have one more video. To our new Hall of Famers, it's truly an honor to be with you and celebrate you this evening. As I've told all of you today, I don't call you Hall of Famers. You are true legends, the best of the best. Your accomplishments and accolades speak for themselves, but they only tell part of your story. You are here tonight because you never stopped working and growing, and you didn't allow outside voices to define you. Thank you for representing the green and white so well. I am so proud and humble to be a part of this. Michigan State, thank you for all the opportunities that you've given me. And being uh, back here brings such amazing memories, and it almost feels like I've never been away. The deciding factor uh, was the atmosphere and the family atmosphere that's here every, each and every day that makes this place so special. Just know the love will always be there for those that came before me, played with me or after. Remember, it takes a village. I wanted to give you all a glimpse of the village that it took to build this Hall of Famer. I love you all. Go green. Yeah, that was a great look at this weekend's uh, festivities there. Uh, definitely congratulations to all the former Spartans that were inducted in, in this year's class. Speaks to the culture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely speaks to the culture. It's, a, yeah. it's pretty special when you got a, you know, yeah. multi-millionaires coming back for grind week. Mm -hmm. What do we got, Owen? Yeah. Talk to the culture of MSU basketball. Yeah. So we got, um, I think we got a, a video here, Owen, on, yeah, Grind Week. So I see some of the players that came back. Last year, uh, Austin Thornton and, and Travis Walden are two guys who I had the honor of walking this campus with and going to battle with. They reached out to me and they said, yo, we want to do Grind Week, but we want to do it at Michigan State. We want to get all the guys back. That's what it's about. And so to have everyone here is it's, it's such a special thing because you know, a lot of people 
talk about having a fraternity and you know a brotherhood and being tight knit, but it don't always show, you know. And to know that that love and support, and you got all the guys coming back and coaches will keep making it happen. That's why Michigan State is a place like no other. Yeah, like you were saying, just uh, speaks to the culture. Um, a lot of former players are back. Also, Michigan State, three of their um, 2023 commits, uh, Garrick Norman, Jeremy Fears, Xavier Booker, they were also back. Um, it's just um, something that doesn't happen a lot of places, and um, it's a concrete uh, reminder of what the players really think of Coach Izzo, regardless of what um, the media might try to say um, nationally after <laughs> timeouts that uh, yield he a, yell. a lot of constructive criticism. No, um, I think that is irrefutable uh, sort of insight into what the players really think of Coach Izzo and his style. It doesn't matter what the media thinks. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what the outside thinks. When you look at Grind Week, when you look at Draymond, what he said, that speaks volumes to the program and the culture that Tom Izzo has built. To me, that matters more than anything. When you can grab guys making millions of dollars, Hall of Famers, uh, NBA stars, guys that won national championships, when they're going to come back for a week and they're going to grind with your current players, mm -hmm. that really speaks to your culture. Yeah. And... Um, it's 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 really special to see, really really special to see. And mm -hmm. so, all those that doubted the goat, you know, he showed you, put together a top five class, coming into 2023. So, we'll see how that plays out. But we're gonna end the show with Owens 360 MSU Sports Weekly Update. Yeah, we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. And um, we'll see you next time, and we'll leave you with this. Good night, go green, and God bless. What up, everybody? It's another week of Owens 360 MSU Sports Weekly Update. Let's dive right into it. MSU Men's Soccer on September 9th. MSU tied Bowling Green 1-1. One one. Then on Monday, MSU found their identity and won 4-1 to one over Chicago State. Captain Will Perkins, he made his impact known with both a goal and an assist in the match. Now flipping over to MSU Women's Soccer. On September 8th, MSU tied Oakland 0-0 nil -nil in a performance that Coach Hosser really wanted to improve on. Then two days later, the squad took on number 19 Colorado in a game that was delayed after five minutes into the match because of the amount of rain on DeMartin Field. The Spartans did pull off the upset though, 4-2 in a game where Cameron Evans, she had a hat trick and was massive for MSU. MSU Field Hockey did not play this week, but will take on number 19 Rutgers on Friday. MSU Volleyball fell to North Carolina three sets to none and also fell to Duke three to two in a match that MSU took to third and fourth sets where Meredith O'Gorman had 14 kills in that one as well. Until next week, I am Owen Ozas with Owen's 360 MSU Sports Weekly Update.